Okay, so this is kind of a weird video for me to make. I've been very, very, very outspoken about my opposition to trendy megachurch pastors and folks that really don't preach the gospel and the hyper enter entertainmentization of worship and how it's just all about lights and show and smoke machines and all that kind of thing. And so people could easily look at me and my channel and say, okay, Isaac is just vehemently against this stuff. He sees no good in it whatsoever and um, he hates it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the end of the story. But what if I were to tell you that there was a period of my life that not only did I not have a distaste for it, I was attracted to it. It appealed to me. And this wasn't too long ago, maybe four years ago or so, that I really began to say, hey, like, I like this. Like, I know I shouldn't like it, but I do like it. And I want to tell you a little bit why uh, trendy churches, trendy, you know, all that kind of that, that, that ambiance and that uh, lifestyle, that culture appealed to me. And maybe by doing that, we can begin to understand a little bit more of what the problem is with it and where maybe we need to learn from it. Okay, so this is this is my story. I grew up in like a Christian homeschooled household. We were known as like the liberal homeschool family because just because we weren't like ultra hyper farmers family conservative out in the middle of nowhere. So it was kind of funny because we were very conservative and yet we were seen as like the liberal ones because we wore pants and we listened to secular music sometimes. So anyway, that was kind of funny. But all that being said is that we grew up in this kind of conservative place, this conservative you know, bubble for the most part. Um, and then also our church was fairly conservative. We sang some, you know, some modern music as well, but we had pews. It was just very staunch, you know, not, not hype and not cool and not trendy. That's for sure. So growing up in this, you know, I liked it uh, because I liked it because you, I was listening to a lot of like podcasts and things that were Kind of very similar to the content that I make today, honestly. A lot of inspiration I took from that growing up. And uh, and I was like, okay, I don't want this. I want the meat. I don't want the milk that they're serving up. I don't want the trendy the TED Talks that these pastors are trying to serve up. I want the true expositional preaching from the Bible. And I don't want worship with, you know, running around and flag, you know, waving. I just want, you know, real, true uh, worship that is focused on God and not on me. So... I loved it. I was in it. And then either you go through a period of your life, you, you graduate, and then I was at university for a while, and then I left, and I kind of got in a spiritual funk. I was like, you, you're kind of evaluating, and I'm, for most people, I think they do this, evaluating, okay, what did I grow, grow up believing? What did I... What do I take from that? What do I disagree with? Like, you got to be really honest with yourself. A lot of people aren't honest with themselves until way later down the line. But this was a moment of clarity where I'm like, hey, what do I really believe? I know I play this part that this is what I believe about this. But what do I actually like feel in my heart about all this? And if I was honest at that point, a lot of the hype around, you know, like hype worship, and that kind of thing, and people that were really into it. You know, I'm not saying that they, that, that that it was just like necessarily the crazy, crazy stuff, but just like the the worship where people were into it and they were really singing and they were really excited and they were really joyful about it. That appealed to me. It did. It appealed to me. I'm sorry. Like it really did because I grew up where maybe you'd have a couple people raising their hand. And that was pretty much it. And I also felt embarrassed to like kind of really show any kind of emotion during worship. And yet I wanted to, I was like, I'd catch the music, pick up a little bit. And I'm like, I want to just go crazy right now because I'm, because I'm experiencing this, but we can't, we can't, we got to reel it in. We got to reel it in. And so you're like, okay, this is appealing to me. Um, what about the pastors that are preaching? If I'm honest, yeah, I knew they weren't super good. A lot of them weren't super good about focusing on the gospel or doing expositional preaching. Like that's true. They didn't go verse by verse. Um, they could have focused a lot more on okay, understanding the nuts and bolts of what the gospel means. Absolutely. Uh, but they were really good about application. They're really good about practical things of life. They were, they had, a lot of them had a lot more of a softer heart, it seemed like, towards mental health 
towards the, the, the daily life of what we're going through. It wasn't just all highfalutin theology. It was real, like on the ground stuff. But okay, so th- that's what I was beginning to notice. In the midst of this, there is a battle. There's an internal battle because I, it's like having two people in your brain that constantly have answers for each other. So I would say, okay, you know, if I'm honest, I, at that point, I, I really like the, the worship. And then I would go back and, and my other side of me would say, okay, Isaac, you, you like the worship and you're supposed to like the worship because it's entertaining and it's high emotion. That's what you you like you, because you're a human and you want to get stirred up by emotions, but you need to stay grounded and focus on God. And I'd be like, well, uh, our emotions are part of us. Like you can... You should engage with your emotions and and be your whole being while you're in worship. Like to be emotionless is just it makes no sense. And the other side would say, "Oh well, it's you're getting too stirred up into the emotion and, and you're getting swept away and and it's not good to just be uh, you know or guided by your emotions in that way." And so there would this be this internal battle when it comes to preaching. It would be like, "Well, hey, those guys, you know, I know they're not super deep theologically and maybe they get some things wrong, but they have a really soft." heart and they understand the compassion and presence of Jesus and his healing power and his transforming power in our life and how he meets us in just the practical things. And the other side would say, well, that's true, but you know, you, we preach high theology over here because you as a disciple should be able to take that theology yourself and apply that. We're just making sure that you're a theological, you have a great theological depth. And then I would say, well, it's nice to hear some practical application every once in a while like I, you know it's cool to just hear all this stuff about the bible and that kind of thing but i i could use some help about applying it to my life like i want it to feel real and so there would be this paradox it would be this battle where i'm like i know i know i shouldn't like this maybe but i kind of do and why do i do is it all out of just self indulgence is it all just because i want to be entertained or is there something to this here. Like it'd be this weird thing where I'm like, I like the emotion that everyone is showing. And yet I see the emotional manipulation that is taking place. And so it's like, I want this, but I don't want this. I want people to be in it. And I want to be in a place where, where their faith is alive. Like that's what I wanted. I wanted to, to be in a place where faith was alive. But yet when I was in places like that, I couldn't help but it feeling fake because of the emotional manipulation that was taking place from the stage. And so there's this desire in my heart. I think what was going on, it was, it was pulling out things in my heart that I wanted, I wanted to, to, to connect with. Like, it's like, I wanted there to be a real emotion in my heart about the worship. And I wanted there to be real application about the preaching, but yet it was kind of mingled and twisted with all this manipulation and and just um, focus on the trendiness and and you know obviously you guys you know if you've seen my content about trendy pastors you know my perspective on pastors that really flaunt themselves as celebrities and how damaging and negative that is, um, but that's where I was. I just want to pop in here real quick and tell you a little bit about Patreon. Patreon is a way that people support me on a monthly basis so I can continue to make content that equips people to follow Jesus daily. Thank you to everyone that's already signed up and if you haven't and you're interested, we do video calls, we have exclusive videos, there's an exclusive Discord. I'd be so grateful if you signed up and supported what I'm doing. Click the link in my description. Now, onto the video. I basically got to the point where I would say, okay, so conservative churches are really good about theology and they're really good about Um, you know, holding strong to the gospel and preaching the word and all that kind of thing. And like more uh, trendy churches would be better at, you know, creating interesting art and creating, you know, good, uh, like meaningful emotional worship that that really hits you in the soul. And so they really do this well. They, They have really good method to how they go about things and it seems very seamless and it's and, and yet we really have the theology over here, but it's a false dichotomy. You, there are churches. The, the truth is, this is what I realized because I, I was looking for a church for a long time and I found a church and it really baffled me because for a long time I thought uh, trendy churches have community and they have practical application of their teaching and they have good worship that, that it really t- like gets you. 
and uh, and then the conservative churches, they are the staunch ones that really don't have that much of a community, but they really preach the gospel really well, and they preach the Bible, and that's really good. And that, you know, for me at that point, like, that's the most important. You can do away with all the other stuff. But it's a false dichotomy. That's the truth of it. I don't want you to feel, uh, some people do feel jaded. They feel jaded. They're like, okay, you know, all churches have just sold out. And all the churches that haven't are just filled with 90-year-olds. It's not true. I guess I just want to give some compassion to folks and and maybe extend some compassion your way as well. Um, People in your life that you're seeing are going to these churches that you're just like, hey, you're not, they're not preaching the gospel. Why are they going to this church? It might not be just because they're, uh, you know, they want their ears to be tickled. It might not be just because they want uh, to be entertained. They genuinely, I'm going to say a bunch of them, genuinely want to know God. They want to hear his word. They want to be in community. And they're seeing these big churches come out of nowhere and they're really growing fast and it seems to be an exciting community and they're clinging on to them. Don't don't dismiss them. Don't dismiss their faith. But it's really just what their appetite is being formed into because that's what they're being fed. So you don't want, like, you're going to consume what you're given. If all you're given is a diet of milk, then that's what your body is going to be used to. Of course, they're going to have a hard time understanding the meat or consuming the meat because they've been raised up on a diet of milk. That's not, that's not really their fault. That's, I mean, under, I get it. Like, okay, they could have put themselves in a better position. They could have went to a better church, da, 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 da. Young Christians, they don't know this. And so what can we do? Well, I mean, for me, the gateway was exposing them things on, exposing to them to preachers online that really gave them the meat. And then they began to understand, wait a minute, my pastor at my church is really not giving me meat. Where can I find solid teaching? Where can I find things that are actually going to fill me up? But I don't want you to go around, and because I went around like this, thinking that, Okay, you know, I've got it signed, sealed, and delivered. I know what the best kind of church is like, and and I can just like, you know, I know what it's like, and you're not going to one. Because they're trying to find a place. They're trying to find a place to belong. They're trying to find a place to be fed. I have a lot more sympathy towards the people that go to these kind of trendy churches than I used to, and compassion for them. Um, I don't have as much compassion for the people that are leading them, because there's a lot of manipulation going on. Truly, there is. Um, But I guess that's the message of this video is that I was there. I was there. I was into this. I was, it appealed to me. I could genuinely say that I wanted to watch these sermons. I wanted to take this stuff in because it hit somewhere that that other preaching wasn't hitting. And I don't think that's because it was just hitting in a, a sinful, prideful place or, you know, just, you know, really building me up in a positive way, but it was hitting some of the wounds and, and talking about things and how to na- navigate anxiety and, and understand God as the is emotional healer and his presence and power in our life and how we can, you know, operate when we don't feel like getting out of bed. These are the things that really hit me that attracted me to it so i get it i've been there and look as as cliche as it might sound we are all on a spiritual journey the truth that's the truth i've changed my theological perspectives i've grown i've matured and now as i get older and i'm not that old but as i get older i just have that much more compassion for people that are on a particular place on their journey. And I'm not saying you don't speak up when they're saying something false or they're going down a bad path, especially as a friend. I'm going to say, hey, maybe that's not the best church to go to. Or what What are they teaching here? Do you think they're really teaching the Bible? That's cool. But but I just have grace for people because look, they're learning. They're, God is changing and he's transforming them. And I don't know, man. I'm a lot less into, I'm just going to, tell you what church to go to and you obviously are not a christian because you go to that church like i just don't think that's true i just don't think that's true because i've been there i've been there anyway thanks for watching this video hope you got something from it until next time god bless